Marcus Elementary School here in Finlayson, Minnesota. Look at this crowd. They are absolutely nuts, as is always the case with the AWF. Matt Carson, I'll be joined by my broadcast colleague, DJ Draper, in just a moment. Two great matches on tap. You're going to see 6% body fat, Rob James, one-on-one -on -one with Ryan Cruz, and then a little bit later on, Aria Davari in the ring with Mikey Moore. It's a great half hour, ladies and gentlemen, and we're going to kick things off with a very special guest as I turn it over to my colleague, DJ Draper. Now, live wire, Johnny Parks, you have your hands full here tonight. You're going to be in the main event taking on one half of the AWF Tag Team Champions, Diablo John Johnson. Let me tell you something, people of Finlayson, we've got a misfit out there who runs around in a little kilt. I call it a dress, don't you? And we know about the people of Finlayson, it's men wear men's clothes and women wear women's clothes. So let me tell you something about John Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, what in the world is going on here? Johnny Parks scheduled to get into the ring a little bit later on with Diablo John Johnson. And for some unknown reason, Johnson waffles Johnny Parks with a chair here to kick things off. This is insanity. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. We gotta get some help for Johnny Parks. Rob James, 6% body fat, 94% better than everyone else. And tonight, I'm in a tournament for the AWF Championship. And I'm going to prove just that, that I'm 94% better than everybody in this locker room. Tony Danucci was taken out recently. Wonder who did that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, 6% body fat, Rob James, who of course says... Not only is he 6% body fat, he's better than 94% of the rest of us. To do battle, to kick things off here at the elementary school in Finlayson, Minnesota, should be a tremendous opening match. Hello, my 45ers. Ryan Cruz here. Big night tonight for me tournament match against 6% body fat Rob James. You know, he and I, we fought all over the Midwest, one-on-one, -on -one. familiarity right there. But you know what they say? Familiarity breeds contempt. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Ryan Cruz, one-on-one -on -one with 6% body fat Rob James, DJ Draper. These two men, certainly no strangers to one another. No strangers indeed. They've gone up and down with one another all over the upper Midwest. Now they're here in the American Wrestling Federation. This is certainly going to be a competitive matchup. Well, I don't think you're going to find two guys more equally matched than Rob James and Ryan Cruz. And you would have to say probably on the overall, if you look at the one loss records, one on one against each other, probably pretty even down right down the pipe. Dozens and dozens of matches. I'm not even exaggerating, and I'm sure it's probably each one against the other is at about 500. Six percent body fat. Rob James, of course, as I said at the outset, claiming that he's better than 94 percent of the rest of us. Absolutely right, and this is a gentleman here who is so serious about his physical conditioning. I want to tell you, it's really terrible being over at his house for dinner because he gives you this little chicken breast with all the fat trimmed off of it. You ask for some butter on your broccoli, and he just stares at you blankly. This guy is very, very serious about his shape there in the ring. There's no question in my mind, if you're invited to somebody's house and they haven't pretty much set out all the fat-laden foods. It's not a good night at the office for you, DJ Draper. You know what, Karsh, we're in the holidays now, and you look like you've had some uh, treats and cookies here yourself. Don't worry about it. Back to the action at hand. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Cruz, as talented 
a competitor as there is on the wrestling scene in the upper Midwest. And again, in terms of size, in terms of wrestling style, these two almost mirror images of one another. Be sure to catch the upcoming American Wrestling Federation action when it comes to a venue near you. Cruz certainly likes to use the high-flying style, but right now he's being grounded by 6% body fat Rob James. Looks like he's uh, turning the corner a bit, though. Look at the athleticism of Ryan Cruz, deep underhook into that arm drag takedown. Oh, high elevation. And 6% body fat is 100% in trouble right now. Oh, what a maneuver on the part of Ryan Cruz had head scissors take over and out of the ring. Goes 6% body fat, Rob James. And I tell you what, he may be 6% body fat, but he's about 206% arrogance and attitude as far as I'm concerned. Certainly, he has the credentials. I'm not arguing with the man's track record. He's a bodybuilding competitor, a fitness guru, but come on, leave some of the attitude at home. You know what, Mick, you just talked about all of his credentials, not only in wrestling, but in bodybuilding as well. And someone like Rob James, I think, has every right to come out here with confidence in the AWF. I see great things for this superstar. Well, there's no question about that. Oh, man, big European uppercut on the part of Ryan Cruz. Again, ladies and gentlemen, Mick Karsh, hang on just a second. Telegraphed it. Oh, man, knee into the... That nape of the neck, count of one, count of two, almost that fast. We're at the elementary school in Finlayson, Minnesota with the AWF. Another raucous, enthusiastic, jam-packed crowd, DJ. This is the norm, not the exception. Of course they're loud, they're raucous, because they get to be on TV. I mean, we're putting these people on TV? Oh, come on. Sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, my broadcast partner, his words speak for themselves. And of course, we disavow any connection to his opinions whatsoever. Still to come, we're gonna take a look at two more great competitors. Mikey Moore, constantly improving, will be in the ring with the very, very dangerous Aria Davari. Aria Davari, of course, one of the leading contenders for the AWF Championship in the absence of the grounded MIA Tony Danucci. Certainly right, Mick, and with that belt vacant, uh, Arya Davari definitely looking like uh, one of the favorites. If uh, you know, if it wasn't the holidays and my budget was, you know, so tight, I'd I'd put some dollars down on Arya Davari to be our next champion. As I've said many times before, you toss nickels around like they're garbage can covers. You've never bet on anything in your life, and if you have, you've certainly welched on the bet. So let's not go there, Mr. Las Vegas. Let's not talk about you placing any money on anything. Back to the action in the ring. Referee Rob Page, one of the more experienced officials here in the upper Midwest, and I know for some reason, again, a guy you don't particularly care for, referee Page. He seems to do, uh, he seems to be as bipartisan and fair, depending on who the competitors are in the ring. And look at Ryan Cruz there using, using his skull to go after the chin of Rob James. Right now, I think uh, Page, our referee, is doing okay. What a shot on the part of 6% body fat, Rob James, once again posturing to the crowd. He might have knocked Ryan Cruz completely unconscious. Count of one, two, it's all, oh man. Boy, that's two and about nine tenths there on the count. Oh, now are you being critical of Rob Page? What are you talking about? What are you talking about since when was I critical? I just said the man almost pinned Ryan Cruz. Is that being critical in your estimation? Will you please listen to what you're saying? You seem to be criticizing the count more than what was going on between the two competitors. You know what, you're delusional. You're, somebody, get this guy another brat. Get him another brat because clearly you're having problems out here. 6% body fat with a big body slam now. 
Rob James, very, very athletic. He's a risk taker here. He's a daredevil in that ring. And again, posturing, wasting all the time in the world here. Well, you sent a telegram. Pony Express, no wonder you landed on your hind end. That's what I'm talking about. You can be confident, but, but stupid in the ring and overly erring it is another thing. Definitely right, Mick, and these two have scouted each other. They've watched tapes, they've wrestled each other dozens of times. Each one of them knows what's coming up, and Ryan Cruz definitely knew that Rob James was gonna be taken to the sky. You know, you talk about athleticism. Ryan Cruz showing some incredible agility in that ring. There's that spinning heel kick. In for the float over the cover, kind of one and two, it's all in again. Wow. A couple of times in this matchup, ladies and gentlemen, the referee's hand was on the way down to the canvas for that third count. The competitors managing to kick out, you know, the staying power, the stamina of both these wrestlers, I don't know, of two guys that are in better physical condition in all of the AWF. You know what, Mick, it's fitting that we're in an elementary school because these two have a, as much energy as a second grader running around here playing dodgeball during the day. You know, there's times that I regret handing you the microphone, and that was one of them. Oh, wait a minute, there's, oh, that's a shot. Those analogies sometimes are, are real stretches on your part. Wait a minute, big crossbody from the top. Count of one, count of two. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Where did Rob James, that's got to be instinctive, got to be instinctive. You know, Nick Bockwinkle, one of the greats of all time, once said, it gets to be where in the middle of the night in your sleep, you roll your shoulder up thinking you're at the count of three. You know, he was certainly a, a great, successful competitor, uh, definitely, but it looks like that these guys like Rob James and Ryan Cruz are, are gonna be that next level here in the AWF. Coming up next, the high-flying match continues, and later, an in-depth extended play interview with the recovering Tony DiNucci. Stay tuned for more Saturday Night Slam. I will climb. I will scratch, I will do whatever I gotta do, but I will get to you, and I will have my chance. There's no question about it, they've certainly elevated the game. Oh, that backbreaker. Oh, what a move on the part of Rob James. My God, is his head still on his shoulders? Cruz was planted. Are you serious? If that is an instinct, and guts alone, where does he get? It? Where does he get? It? I don't know, but that athleticism certainly uh, with the stamina coming into play there for Ryan Cruz. Rob James signaling that this could be it. Watch him now setting him up. This could be good night. He's certainly, wait a minute now. Cruz blocking it here. There's a couple of elbow shots. Takes him over, nice escape on the part of Ryan Cruz. Wait a minute now. Picks him up, cinches him in, and drops him. Out of one, two, it's all oh, got him. It is all over. You know, you can't call it an upset because again, both of these wrestlers probably have an equal amount of victories against each other. But what a sensational counter into that pinning combination. Ryan Cruz, ladies and gentlemen, with his sights set on all the gold here in the AWF. And he took a quantum leap forward, dispatching 6% body fat, Rob James. Be sure to catch the upcoming American Wrestling Federation action when it comes to a venue near you. Hey, Tony, 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 Tony hey, get some, get some help back here. Hey, hey, let's get somebody. Go get, 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 go get the athletic trainer. Get the athletic trainer. Tony, this. Tony, to Tony, come to. Oh. Good Lord.
Ladies and gentlemen, we're here again on Saturday Night Slam, KSTC Channel 45, DJ Draper alongside the former American Wrestling Federation heavyweight champion, Tony DiNucci. Tony, great to have you here. At our live events with the AWF, we have folks coming up. They just want to know, Tony, after what happened back in September, how are you doing? We know it's been a, it's been a slow process. Um, the healing's been not as quick as I'd like it to be. I'm getting a little older than, than I was a few years back, and, you know, I had a partially tore tendon in uh, the rotator cuff on my right shoulder, pretty severe concussion. Uh, I had a partially tore quadriceps. Um, I was pretty beat up, but I'm coming along. Um, I'd probably say out of 100%, I'd be at maybe 75%. 75%, so I'm sure we're going to see you back in an American Wrestling Federation ring eventually, if not in the near future, but that's great news for the fans of the American Wrestling Federation. And, Tony, you're someone who's been around this business a long time, over 20 years. As a professional wrestler, you've competed all over the globe uh, with various companies. This incident, putting this into perspective, into your whole career, how does that play into the bigger picture of Tony DiNucci as a professional wrestler? Over the years that I've been in the business, and there's not much that really shakes me up because I've been in this business since 1988. I've been trained by Pat Tanaka, uh, Brad Riggins, some of the best. And there isn't much that shakes me up. This is the topic, uh, top of the pinnacle. I have, I have, I have never been through anything like this in my entire life because these guys didn't want to just hurt me. They wanted to take me out. When you take a crowbar to a man's head, and uh, we're talking uh, 27 staples in my head, they wanted, they wanted to take me out permanently. This wasn't just something, let's, let's get them hurt so they can take the belt. This is They wanted to take me out because they don't like me. And uh, they proved that by what they did. And, you know, God was watching me up above, and I'm here, and I'm breathing. And uh, it doesn't leave the back of my mind for a minute. Now, Tony, I, you did mention the bigger picture, but, of course, you did have to vacate the American Wrestling Federation Heavyweight Championship. In this bigger picture, how does that play into what your motives are going to be going forward here in the AWF, knowing that that belt is vacant and you no longer have that championship. Number one, the belt is not important to me right now. A belt, it, it, it means nothing to me right now. I've, Like I said, I've been in this business since 1988. I've had tag team belts, heavyweight belts, TV championships with the AWA. None of it matters. What matters now for me is I need to put my game face on and I need to focus. And I, I'm going to be honest with you. I know who you are, and I will get to you. I'm going to climb up on my feet one by one. I'm going to go through who I have to go through, but there will come a time and a place where it's going to be you and I. And folks, I know you know me as a, as a, as a loving type of a guy, and, and I love the fans, but again, you know what? This isn't about the fans anymore. This is about you and I. This isn't a wrestling match anymore. This is going to be you and I, and I'm going to take you out, and I'm going to hurt you, and I'm going to let whoever is there watch, and I'm not trying to impress. It's not about none of it. A belt's nothing. It's about you and I. You tried to hurt me permanently, and guess what? It's in my head constantly. My attention is focused on you, solely on you, and I will get to you. I will climb I will scratch, I will do whatever I got to do, but I will get to you, and I will have my chance. Tony, so it sounds like from what you're saying, you do in fact know who this individual or individuals were that did this to you. Tony, when are you going to let us know who this was, and when are you going to get this individual either in the ring or in an alley or in a bar? Where are you going to take this man on? And when can we see you back in the American Wrestling Federation? In all respect to you, in all respect to the audience, I don't need to announce anybody. It's between you and me. And when the time comes, rather be in a bar, rather be on a street, rather be in a ring, rather be on the top of the IDS building, I don't give a rat's patooey. 
but it will happen. Wrestling fans, an intense individual, an intense competitor here in the American Wrestling Federation. I don't know if I've ever seen Tony Danucci as fired up as he is right now. And for whoever that individual is, I have to feel sorry for him because with the intensity shown by Tony Danucci, this vengeance is going to be coming right for him. And we're going to be seeing that matchup, I believe, in the near future here in the American Wrestling Federation.